The Vietnam War stands as a haunting chapter in the pages of human history. It was a conflict that left an indelible mark on the world, searing the hearts and minds of those involved and casting a shadow of devastation and suffering over the nation of Vietnam. While men were dying in the war, there were women facing brutal punishments. What do you think is the harshest crimes women have had to face during the war? Do you think there was any justice in those days? In the crucible of conflict, women bore the brunt of unimaginable hardships, enduring physical and emotional trauma, displacement, loss, and societal upheaval. They courageously navigated treacherous terrain, shouldering responsibilities as wives, mothers, sisters, and daughters, while grappling with the anguish and uncertainties that war thrust upon them. The stories of these women deserve to be told, for they offer a glimpse into the profound sacrifices and resilience of women who silently suffered during those turbulent times. In this video, we are going to delve into the torturous treatments women had to bear during the Vietnam War. By delving into the narratives of these women, we can gain a deeper understanding of the multifaceted impact the Vietnam War had on the lives of those who bore witness to its horrors and find inspiration in their strength amidst unimaginable adversity. One of the most common injustice that women have to face across the world is rape. During the Vietnam War, soldiers from the US, South Korea, and other countries committed rape and other acts of sexual violence against Vietnamese civilians. Famous American scholar Elizabeth Jean Wood argued that U.S. troops often engaged in rape because their commanders tolerated it. Surprisingly, the documented crimes against Vietnamese women by American military personnel were largely ignored in the international legal discussions following the war. Even today, modern feminists, anti-war activists, and historians often dismiss these incidents. However, according to some American veterans, racism, sexism, or a combination of both fueled the sexual violence against Vietnamese women. The social movements that shook the U.S. in the early 1970s played a role in this as well. Shockingly, out of the reported cases, only a small number of rape incidents involving Vietnamese victims led to court-martial convictions for U.S. Army and Marines personnel between 1965 and 1973. The issue of children conceived as a result of rape by South Korean military personnel remain a contentious and unresolved matter in Vietnamese and South Korean societies. These children face ongoing discrimination by the Vietnamese government, while their existence is unacknowledged by the South Korean government. In Vietnamese, these racially mixed children born to a South Korean father and a Vietnamese mother during the war are referred to as Lai Dai Han. The exact extent of the rapes is still a subject of debate, but one study suggests that over half of the Lai Dai Han births were a result of rape. An entire clan of mixed children, yet more than half, were a consequence of rape? Is that not cruel and inhumane, to subject women to pain and torture for one's own sick pleasure? In Gina Marie Weaver's book, Ideologies of Forgetting Rape and the Vietnam War, she points out the glaring omission of rape in narratives about the war and highlights the significant changes in how war impacts women, especially in the era of total war. Weaver argues that the U.S. redirected the national conversation about the war to focus on the medical and psychological issues faced by Vietnam veterans effectively suppressing the traumas experienced by the truest victims of the war, Vietnamese civilians, particularly women. So by acknowledging the atrocities committed by U.S. soldiers in Vietnam, Weaver contends that the American public's perception of the veteran as a victim would be challenged or even shattered. Furthermore, she notes that not only were the documented crimes against Vietnamese women by American military personnel disregarded in international legal discourse immediately after the war, but they continue to be dismissed by modern feminists, anti-war activists, and historians. If these heroes' transgressions were shared with the public, then they no longer would be seen as heroes, but as vicious monsters who took advantage of innocence. According to Datis, gang rapes were widespread during the Vietnam War, allegedly as a result of a deliberate command policy of violence against the Vietnamese people by U.S. military personnel. Many soldiers considered consensual sex and forced rape as inevitable consequences of the battlefield, either as just rewards or collateral damage. In camaraderie and brotherhood, the men supposed to be the saviors of the land violently violated its women, a harsh truth which has been hidden from the public for a long time. A truth while apparent to the masses has been silently ignored to praise the war veterans. Are they heroes meant to be praised or monsters meant to be imprisoned? What do you think? Weaver emphasizes the richness of primary sources that provide accounts of violence, including testimonies presented in open hearings during the war, court cases, military investigations, 
oral reports collected for publication during and after the war, as well as literary works such as poems, novels, and memoirs. However, Weaver highlights that the American discourse surrounding the Vietnam War has primarily focused on American experiences and the cost to America, neglecting the voices of Vietnamese women. The nature of sexual abuse makes it difficult to discuss openly due to its deeply private and personal nature. In conclusion, Weaver asserts that the true healing occurs when the public listens to the victims of the war and actively engages in the recovery of Vietnam. By acknowledging the voices and experiences of Vietnamese women and supporting their journey towards healing and justice, a more comprehensive understanding of the Vietnam War can be achieved. The Vietnamese victims may never have found true justice in their lives, while the soldiers live lives being commemorated and celebrated for their bravery. Strangely enough, sexual violence wasn't only inflicted in the name of pleasure, it was also used as a strategy to get the women to talk out of fear. During the Vietnam War, sexual violence emerged as a harrowing tool employed to extract information from the enemy. It served as a fear tactic, deliberately used to intimidate Vietnamese women who played significant roles in the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese Army. The objective was to instill terror within these women, aiming to weaken their resolve and discourage their involvement in the conflict. Sexual violence was employed as a means to humiliate and degrade women who held opposing political viewpoints, serving as a warning to others who dared to challenge the opposing forces. The lack of reporting mechanisms and absence of avenues for redress created a culture of impunity enabling members of the armed forces to engage in such acts without fear of repercussions. Perpetrators, or our supposed heroes, were well aware that their actions would not be reported to their superiors, thereby allowing them to continue their heinous acts unchecked. This culture of impunity further exacerbated the terror and trauma experienced by women as they faced the constant threat of sexual violence at the hands of the armed forces. The purpose behind this widespread use of sexual violence was to terrorize, intimidate, and specifically target women during the war. It was a deliberate strategy to undermine the morale and resilience of the Vietnamese population, particularly women who were vital participants in various aspects of the conflict. This systematic approach aimed to break their spirit, demoralize the community, and undermine the efforts of those fighting for their cause. In addition to the calculated use of sexual violence as a fear tactic, there were also instances of opportunistic sexual violence. These acts were driven by individual perpetrators taking advantage of the chaotic and volatile environment of war, exploiting vulnerable individuals for their own personal gain. The absence of law and order, coupled with the breakdown of societal structures, created an environment conducive to such opportunistic acts as sexual violence. While some say that this is a consequence of war and cannot be ignored, some might argue that war isn't an excuse to rape the women of its nations. What differentiates man from animals is a consciousness that feels guilt and other emotions. So what do you think these men who tortured women felt in committing such heinous acts during the war? Do you think they were justified in their acts? This dark chapter in history highlights the devastating impact of sexual violence as a weapon of war, inflicting immeasurable pain and suffering on countless Vietnamese women. It was a cruel tool used by men to oppress and derive pleasure from the opposite gender. There are around between 5,000 to 3,000 Lai Dai Han in the world, and considering that more than half of these children were conceived from rape goes to show us the inhumane practices of men during war. What do you think of this? Do you think that these women deserve reparations and remuneration for the pain and suffering they have had to undergo? Or do you think that the world should move on and forget about this issue already? Because while you or I may forget, but the victims of brutality shall forever remember the hands which harmed them. This is it for today. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments section below what you thought about this video and hit the bell icon to make sure to never miss an update. We'll be back with another video soon.